Hello everybody, I'm Rusty. I want to welcome you to Island Breeze Tropicals. So today we're going to be taking a look at uh, bromeliad anatomy and we're going to look at what's called a stolen. So you know what? The sun is shining, the island breeze is blowing. It's time that you and I got growing. Come on, let's have some fun and let's learn about stolons on bromeliads. So in order to show you this type of anatomy on some bromeliads, I think we ought to go up on the plant deck. Come on, let's have some fun. So guys, we're up on the plant deck and we're going to be taking a look at a particular kind of bromeliad anatomy and it's called a stolon. So I'm going to show you close up of what a stolon is and then we're going to take a look at some really cool examples. Okay, I'm going to lean over the plant table and I'm going to show you this bromeliad and now we got it in the frame and what we're going to be looking at is this stem right here. Now that is called a stolon and a stolon is an above ground rhizome. So this is your adult right here and this is the pup and your pup comes out from the stolon right here. So stoloniferous bromeliads are really good at climbing. They're really good in trees or on driftwood as you've already seen. I've mounted a small mini bromeliad on a piece of wood and I'm going to show you why a clumping bromeliad is not that good a choice. So there are some distinctions between uh, a bromeliad that is stoloniferous and one that isn't. So why don't we take a look at that. Um, I'm going to show you what is not stoloniferous and this is a Bilbergia, this is a hybrid that I did and if you can see here this bromeliad is clumping and I'll tell you why that makes a difference in just a sec but this is definitely not stoloniferous there are bromeliads that the pups are even more closely oppressed to the adult than this and if you take a look at this Neo Regilia lucifer, you can see, let's see if I get this in the camera, you can see this pup right here and see how close it is to the adult plant. Definitely not stoloniferous. Now I'm going to show you what is. Okay, so why is a clumping bromeliad not a good choice for mounting on a tree. Well, I'm going to show you. So I want you to take a look at this. This is the Bilbergia I showed you before. And as you can see, it clumps. Now, this will grow on a tree. Remember, they have water in the cup, so that does make them tank-type epiphytes, and they don't have to grow in soil, but that's not the problem here. The problem is, let's say I'm the tree, and you mount this on the tree, well you only have one point of attachment here. Now you wouldn't have the pot, you would wash all of the dirt off, but where this Bilbergia will happily live on the side of the tree, you're going to tie it. We're going to do a video about that soon. It still is not a good choice and the reason is that it only has one point of attachment and that's down here at the root system. So eventually it's going to grow like this clump has and then the wind is going to blow and it's going to blow it off of the tree because you have all of this biomass up here and you have a very small point of attachment. So the Bilbergia is not a good choice again for mounting onto a tree or onto a piece of wood. Um, it only has one point of attachment this is a Neo Regilia. I believe this is Owens Brazil. I'm going to have to lean way over in order to show you these stolons. Now take a look. Look at all of the pups. I'm going to turn it around, see if I can look through it and, and keep it in the frame. Um, if you take a look, you can see all of those pups that are coming out on those stolons. And when you mount this into a tree, it will give it multiple points of attachment. And I'm going to try and get it in the frame and show you the root systems that are coming off of each one of those pups. And that will enable it to climb. 
So this is a close-up and what I want to show you are the roots that are coming out and that will give you um, multiple points of attachment when you put this in a tree or on a piece of driftwood. So as you can see the roots here um, and the stolons and you can see a close-up of all of them so this stoloniferous habit makes this a good climber so I had to put a black background up so you guys could see this wonderful stoloniferous neoregilia this is called Neoregilia hoeniana. By the way, it's starting to rain and um, it may get to be a little noisy. So what I want to do is I want to show you just how long these stolons are. So I've taken the camera off of the tripod and I'm just going to pan up here as best I can and take a look at the length of these stolons. Oh my gosh! Now there's something to remember on all stoloniferous bromeliads that if they are mounted uh, or displayed totally arboreally you really have to make sure that you keep water in the central cup because they have no other way of getting moisture and it will require a little bit more diligence on our part um, because of that but all you got to do is look down on the cup easiest thing in the world now this is a really good example of a stoloniferous bromeliad this is neoregilia palsiflora now we did a collecting corner episode you should take a look uh, at the previous videos and if we go into depth about this I think it's a really really cool plant I think it's one that you should have in your collection it is easy to grow very stoloniferous it is more of a draper than it is a climber uh, and what happens is birds will deposit the seeds um, after they've eaten them on the top of a tree and then what it does is it actually grows from the top of the tree down and you can see that this uh, really is well suited to a hanging basket and here is a brand new pup that's coming out illustrates uh, what a stolen does very well I think And you can see that that's coming out of uh, a parent plant that also came out on a stolen. And here you can get a really good idea as to how far down they hang. So this is another really good example of the stoloniferous growing habit of some bromeliads. So this is another example of a stolen is first habit this particular one is part of the Orlandiana group they are in the genus Ekmia and by the way we're going to be doing a uh, collecting corner episode and maybe even next week about Orlandiana so come back next week I think that's going to be fun so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to show you how long these stolons can be so this will show you uh, how well this plant will climb if you mount it in a tree and you can see the the stolen right there and the Orlandiana group is really really good at climbing unlike the palsiflora that I just showed you uh, these will climb and they really do a good job of it and you can see the roots right there so I hope this shows you guys what a stolen is and how that sets stoloniferous bromeliads apart from clumping bromeliads and why stoloniferous bromeliads are so cool to put on driftwood or put in hanging baskets 
or to mount on trees if you live in a frost-free zone. So anyway, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed looking at Stoloniferous bromeliads. It's a really interesting trait in some bromeliads, and I'm sure you can find some for your collection. So no matter where you are, I hope your sun is shining. I hope you have an island breeze blowing. I know that you need to keep growing, have lots of fun. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.